Welcome back to On Base Live in your Bleach Report app. I am your host, Mookie Betts, and today we have my boy Aaron Nola. Aaron, thanks for coming on the show today, brother. Thank you, Mookie. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, before we get to know you, uh, I do think there was a, a really cool thing done yesterday uh, when Freddie, uh, for his first at bat, got up uh, and we gave him a sent an ovation. I think that was a, a really nice touch by the Dodgers. Uh, so shout out to you, Dodgers, for that. And for the fans, you guys as well. You were even on the mound um, clapping when you really could have been locked in um, there. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing. What do you think about it? Awesome, man. It really is. I mean, you know, it's bigger than baseball. Yeah. It really going is. Going through something like, I can't imagine going through something like uh, something like that, man. I mean, and, and to to shout out for him to for going home and, and taking care and uh, of his business being the man that he is um and you know showing up uh to work ready to play and, and kind of pushing that off to the side not letting him affect his job but also keeping that first and foremost uh family so shout out to you freddie uh so my boy aaron 2018 all-star uh you hold the record for the most consecutive strikeouts tell me about that like how when you were going through the strikeouts were you uh did you know, like, one well, punching everybody out? Or tell, tell me about it. <laughs> that was a weird day, honestly. It really <laughs> was. Uh, I did not know. I knew uh, once I got nine, I think, I uh, I felt like I, I beat DeGrom, I think, because I remember <laughs> oh, he had okay. eight strikeouts oh, one you, day you to start a game. This. I was like, oh, okay, I think I passed him. You were thinking but I didn't know on that, the mound. Yeah, I thought it on the mound, but oh, I was like, okay. I didn't know there was a, a record. Like, uh, I didn't know 10 was a record. And um, you didn't get excited or anything. I mean, you just—I guess you don't really get excited. About it. I've never seen. I don't get excited. About anything. I mean, no, but uh, that was the only thing I thought of. Like, oh, okay, I think I passed the Grom right there. I didn't know ten was a record. I didn't know Tom Seaver held the record. And uh, I got ten, and I remember I got Pete on a. I think it was like one and two. Mm-hmm. And I Changing. threw I threw a sinker down and away. I think it was off the plate and down, and he like poked it out to right field. And I was like, I, oh, they'll probably show it in just a second. But uh, no, we 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 want to show uh, highlights here, buddy. Okay. <laughs> but my brother called me. I think, why do you throw curveball to Pete? I go, uh, I don't know. I didn't know I was going for the record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you thought you had it cool. already. That's cool, though. That's, that's cool. cool. I mean, to to strike out that many people. I mean, locked in. I mean, that's that's kind of the picture you are. You know, just not leaving anything on the over the plate. We'll get to that. So uh, I I like to play this game called on base and off base means uh, if you're in or out on, on whatever the topic is. So first thing, bass fishing should be an Olympic sport. And you're on base. On I'm on base. For tell that. me, tell me why you said that pretty quick. I love bass fishing. I grew up bass fishing. Um, obviously you got the bass masters classics and yep. the tournaments. Uh, you got oh, that. So were you the kid that used to go watch, watch the guys fish on TV? Oh, on yeah, TV. On TV. You didn't go out there. No, I didn't go out there, but okay. we grew up, uh, going, going bass fishing. My dad and my brother, uh, we had a camp down in, uh, West, West Louisiana, uh, kind of on the Texas border. And we used to do that a lot. So, uh, got into it pretty hard, pretty hardcore. And uh, my brother was always big into it. So we loved it, but, uh, it's a, it's definitely a sport in my opinion. It's, it's tough. It's, uh, involves a lot of skill. Okay, so tell me about the skill, because I'm thinking, you know, when I fish, I throw that bad boy out there, <laughs> and I jerk him a little bit, but then it's, I just sit and wait. Well, yeah, so I mean, obviously you got how the water runs, you got certain type of baits. Uh, What's your certain, favorite bait? Certain Is there like a favorite bait or no? So I used to this thing called a little baby brush hog, mm-hmm. so okay. you can fish it a little fast, or you can pop it up and down like you like mm-hmm. to do. Um cool. But I started getting into fishing fast, so like crankbaits, oh, uh, okay, with the little, with the little uh, hooks on the bottom, and they kind of go like this. Oh, so you're throwing it, and, throw you it just and you're reeling, and okay. kind of going like okay. that, and you're reeling, and uh, what so kind I, of uh, lure thing? What that? What is the thing called? Is it the the thumb or I, oh, see, like I an open face over. rod, yeah, open I face reel? Over and I, shh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so those are nice. Those are that's smooth. what you use. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, yeah. I'm almost professional now. You're almost sure. professional. Okay, yeah. right, I like it. Okay, so what about this? Simone Biles can dunk a basketball. <laughs> it's a tough question. I'm in. <laughs> uh, I feel like I feel like I mean, 
if she could dunk a basketball, that's the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> she's impressive, man. She, she's I mean, impressive. she already, for sure. I mean, she's 4'8". How can you be 4'8"? I mean, she's super athletic and everything. Let's let's put some attention on her. Everything she's done, I mean, she's she's awesome. She's great. Have you have you been watching the Olympics at all? A little bit. Do you have did bit. you see any of her stuff? Uh not really. A couple highlights, but uh I mean, I watched her a little bit when basketball she, she was there. Uh basketball I hadn't really watched. I mean, watched, what do you watch rolling? What do you watch, watch on TV? There? Uh <laughs> the, the 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 shot put. Well, I mean, what you nothing? I watched the uh, hundred meter dash. Oh, okay, you got to watch that. Yeah, that was I like cool I like to I like the sprints and track and field. Watched Mondo Duplantis break his own record okay. again. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, for yeah, the pole yeah. vault. Yep, yep, that was so, cool. So yeah. does that get so as he's about to go? I think I can speak for a lot of people. When they're about to start, my my heart starts beating like I get some adrenaline going watching it. I'm assuming that doesn't happen with you. No, no it does. I mean, it, oh, it yeah. does. It does. No doubt. Oh, nice. Okay. Whew. Just I guess not when you are it involves human. me. It involves somebody else. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> so would you know? Yeah. Okay. I got, got you. All right. So what about this? Binging a show all at once is better than waiting to watch it. Watch an episode each week. So would you rather watch it all at the same time or week by week? All at the same time. And you just like getting locked in on it. Get how locked long, in how, on so, it. So a uh, 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 uh Show that has twenty episodes. How long does it take you to watch that? Oh man, I don't know. Probably I got a little girl now, so oh, probably yeah, a little no. bit longer yeah, now. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. back then, twenty episodes, depending on how long the episode is. If it's okay, an hour, ten, probably take me like you're on a ten day road trip. A week, a ten day road trip. Yeah. Oh, I finished that. Finish in, finished yeah, that I, in the I first so, yeah. series and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right, last one. Philly cheesesteaks are, are a consistent meal in your diet. <laughs> I'm off pace. Off that. pace. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You can't you can't keep eating Phillies like that, bro. Uh, no. You can't keep eating Phillies like that. Doctor's office. You did that all the time. <laughs> Speaking of Phillies, you are a Philly. You've been a, a lifer. How is it uh, being a Philadelphian? It's uh, took me a second to to be one. Okay. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but uh, it was different. From, I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, so never really been to a big city ever in my life. And then uh, when I came here in 2015, it was just different, man. It was a uh, big city, loud, um, kind of dirty in areas, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of honking and screaming. I'm like, I don't, I don't know where I'm at right so now. So it's man. almost kind of fast paced. Super fast paced for me. And, um, I mean, I feel like I adjusted pretty good to it. Um, I love it now, obviously. I mean, do you think it's a good contrast being from from the Lou? I call it the Lou. The Lou. I guess you could say St. Louis. Sorry, no disrespect, guys. Uh, do you think it's it, the contrast is what you like? Because when you go home, it's always slow, and then when you go for sure, you know, yeah, when I go home, home, it's definitely slow. Uh, I'm not in the city anymore, but I was there for nine years pretty much bouncing around. I liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife, she ended up liking it a lot too. And she's from like a super small town in Georgia, okay, like North no. Georgia. So okay. it was super slow, like middle of nowhere. And uh, she was kind of so-so on Philadelphia at first, but she started to like it a lot. I mean, it's, it's easy when, you know, you don't have a kid and it's just, you know, you and your wife or your girlfriend and you can go eat at anywhere you want. You can go walk around anywhere you want. Um, but once you start getting a family, your family is growing a little bit and you're like, uh, it's a little tough. So mm -hmm. you got to move, move out. And a lot of guys are out of the city right now, but I still love the city and, uh, we go there a decent amount now still. When it comes to playing, do you appreciate the, and I know, I know you do appreciate it, but I, I wonder like your take on the love and the passion that comes out, especially no, it's all year in Philly, but especially like going in the playoffs, like you, like I want to, I want to know what it feels like there. Cause I played in Boston, I played in LA and, and those are big markets, but I hadn't, you know, I've been in Philly obviously on the other team, but when you're on that side, like, how does that, how does that feel knowing, you know, I, I would assume it's kind of like New York. Yeah. I, uh, I appreciate it a lot now cause I came up in a rebuilding phase, mm. some tough times down those days. Um, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Um, 
So I know what that's about. And then mm-hmm. once we got over that hump and finally made the playoffs in the World Series, it was it was unbelievable. You you always hear because the the 2000, 2018 is like, all you got to do is get to the playoffs, you know, mm-hmm. then the fans, mm-hmm. they'll show up. And mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm so tired of hearing, hearing that. But it was true. Like we got there and it was electric. Mm-hmm. It was crazy. And it's like so addicting. You know, it is being in Boston, LA, but it's so addicting to play in front of them, play in front of your fan base um, and to win, especially um, because playoff baseball is pure. It like is, it's pure it's winning pure. Yep. and you, you do whatever you can to win a baseball game. That's, that's when all egos and no doubt all that stuff is aside no and doubt. everybody just, and, just and wants to win. And Philly's – they're awesome too. The fans are great because they're so into in tune to the game from pitch number one mm-hmm. to the last pitch. Mm-hmm. So that's why that's where they're great, man. Yeah. They're great. They can be tough on you, obviously for sure, as yeah, everybody sure, knows. Sure. But they have your back, and yeah. when you're winning, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So tell me, I think it's fun being our little rivalry situation that we got on between between the Dodgers and the Phillies. You know, both teams have been good for a while. And I know when we go to Philly, whether it's uh, April or September, October, the fans are going to bring it and you guys are going to bring it. And I appreciate that because that's what makes baseball fun. And so um, I really enjoy this little thing. I, I, every time we go to Philly, either y'all go, we go there or y'all come here. We always got Nola Wheeler Suarez. It's Nola Wheeler. I and never then, miss y'all. Uh, <laughs> never. <laughs> Every game. And so, uh, you know, I appreciate it. It's fun. Like, so, but tell me that. How do you, how do you keep switching? Like, how is that knowing that you're going to face the Dodgers? You face the Dodgers twice a year, every year. Every year. And you always have, find a way to, to have some type of success through against us. Is it, is that, just the challenge and the fun of it, or is it like, is it hard? Like, what? Tell me about it. It's tough, obviously. You got a good squad, man. Y'all right, really yeah, do. Yeah. Um, and facing you guys two times a year is pretty much the same guys, mm-hmm. especially at the top of y'all's lineup. It's all about executing. Yeah, you just gotta execute no like, matter what. Just like last night, like my fastball command was so so. Hung a couple curveballs. I capitalized on some curveballs, um, and that's what led to the beginning. So, like, if I don't. Uh, command those pitches mm-hmm. like there's a good chance that y'all gonna hit them pretty hard and uh so it changes each game but that part of it does not change got to try to execute and if things are kind of going south like they were like in that third it doesn't matter make this pitch this pitch matters right here so and that's you probably take that to every to every it's every game honestly. for sure yeah, every, for every sure game. but especially um the bigger teams like like you guys and yankees, the yankees you know. so like there's not too many. There's not that many um, holes in the lineup, mm-hmm. so it's like try not to get ahead of myself and think about this pitch after this pitch. It's this pitch right here, and try to execute it because uh, results are out of my hand. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the only thing that I can control is that pitch. Yep. And then after that, going you, after yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So I do also want to know about Wheeler a little bit. Uh, cause he seems like he's kind of like you where he's kind of really even kill, um, take care, takes care of, of his business, super talented. Um, but you know, he's really, really low key. Can you tell me a little bit about him? The lowest key. Really? I've ever he's been lower around. than you. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's unbelievable. That, man. That's a he low is, bar. He's the best I've ever been around. Okay. He's the best pitcher I've ever been around. Really? Hands down. Uh, he, you know, he's super, he doesn't do much. No, he can't. Um, his his key is much. too low. Yeah, <laughs> no chance. So he but just when he, he just baseball. He probably he's, fishes. He's stuff, baseball. Right? Nah, no, not really fish. Nah, he oh, don't yeah. do too much. Okay. He uh, super quiet. But when he's on the mound, man, you know what you're gonna get out of him. He's, Zach, uh, we're gonna get you on here, and we're gonna we'll we're get gonna him on raise here. your key a little bit, buddy. <laughs> and while we're raising your key, let's get to uh, uh, we have a special video that uh, I want I want to show. Hey y'all, I'm Abby, the producer of On Base. I'm back in the chat, and Bleacher Report and Geico want to know, extra innings, tie game, which pitcher do you want on the mound? Drop it in the chat and roll the clip. Extra innings, tie game, which guy do you want on the mound? Paul Skeens. I think I gotta go with uh, Seth Lugo. I gotta go with Skeens, give me Skeens. Uh, Oh, 
my guy Paul Skeen. That's too tough of a question because pitchers are just fragile creatures. I mean, pitchers are like, like snowflakes. They melt in the sun. Game on the line. I want Corbin Burns. Oh, who shut now? Ryan Presley? Hater? I'm going to say Ryan Presley. Ryan Helsley. I definitely want Otani pitching up for our team. <laughs> Golly. I don't think that'll ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that that was pretty cool. Okay, so I do want to get to know Mr. Aaron Noah a little bit. So you're from the Lou, Baton Rouge, and you didn't really grow up playing baseball, but you had your older brother that did. Yep. And you kind of he kind of got you into baseball. Tell me about that. Yeah, see, my dad coached uh, Little League, my brother – like baseball a lot, obviously. And so I wanted to always be like him. Mm -hmm. And so we always play wolf ball in the backyard, threw the baseball nonstop. Um, but we were always competitive against each other. So yeah, he got me into it. And, uh, once that started rolling, uh, he's three, three and a half years older than me. So I would go to every one of his games, watch all of his games, even when he was in college. Uh, and then we got to play with each other that one year at LSU but he he taught me a lot and he really made me love it love mm. the game cuz uh to me he plays the game the right way it didn't never mattered uh if he struck out or got out and never never took it to the field um i could talk for hours about this dude's mm. story uh he he's overcome a ton of stuff and when i was in the major leagues he was still in the minor leagues uh grinding it out down there but we worked out in the off season and threw together every year and he would never he would always say like i'm making it this year i'm making it this year like he never was down he was always Mm -hmm. positive doing it and like that kind of sparked me too you know like i'm i'm in the major leagues already um but he's still helping me out while he's still in double a and uh in triple a and then he made a transition to catch like mm-hmm. he never caught before so he was he, uh, he, he was a shortstop his whole oh, life oh so i've only seen him life. catch yeah so that's okay so i didn't know that i mean yeah. it makes sense though yeah and he got uh got moved to catcher in miami he was like in triple a for a couple of years and went to coach said what can i do and said, i think catching's your best bet and he called me wow. i'm like bro you catching come <laughs> on no way you're made to be a shortstop in the major leagues and uh he ended up catching and you know, making his run through that and went back to the fall league and catching all these guys that throwing a hundred and go, dude, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) And then he just, he got traded to Seattle and then got traded to San Diego and you guys played him a lot and it was good behind the plate, man. And he loves it. And, uh, you know, he's had a tough road of getting injured and and stuff like that, but, um, he loves catching and he still loves the game a lot and he's taught me a ton. And so that's, he's helped me so much through my career. Uh, to get to where I'm at today. So he's, even though he may not have the same career path as you, you feel like he's still a, a huge influence slash mentor oh, in man. your life. Oh, absolutely. So whenever yeah. you have, whether it be pitching problems or maybe a mental thing going on, your brother, you would call your brother before a lot of people. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he you knows know that what, he's been through it all. Yeah. I mean, he played seven eight years in the minor leagues and transitioned from infield to all over the infield to to catching and getting hurt up and down a lot Mm -hmm. so he's and i've been blessed to not have to do that and uh so he knows a lot more this guy's got a lot of wisdom right so do you call him him, let's say let's say you're facing us or whoever right and you're it's the night before maybe a couple nights before whatever whatever do do you call him and ask advice on I've getting through a line called him a couple times nice. yeah okay that's yeah. that's that's good though yeah, i mean he's probably been, seen so many different he's guys, seen a lot of especially. and uh there's been a game where i gave it up and i called him and he's like why didn't you call me i was like oh, i should have okay. been yeah. that, <laughs> wow he, okay that must cool, have been though. somebody in the west and uh he's like you should call me i should i could told you so yeah i do and that that that's really neat so okay so tell me about that year you went to lsu because of your brother yeah how was like how was that year playing with him was it cool did you you were throwing to him you know how how was that yeah so he was a shortstop at the time then oh, oh yes, and, he, he uh, catch him, bad, yeah uh, i only got recruited by one other school it was uh central florida and uh the pitching coach that was at lsu when my brother was a freshman was the coach at central florida so i got recruited there and then 
you know how it is. I guess LSU heard about it and they recruited me. And I was like, yeah, that's a no brainer. I mean, I'm from here. My brother's here and, uh, obviously played with each other all year, but, uh, it was really cool. I really wish I would have sat back and took it in a little bit mm. more. I feel like yeah, if know. I was a little bit older, I could have could have yeah, done that. Know. But it's a freshman in college yeah. and just trying to make a name for myself and do good for the team. But it was it was pretty special, man. It was special for my family too. So I do want to I want to jump on and then off the train. So I want to jump on the 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 skeins train real quick. This guy is real. We all know this. Did you see him? Like you knew this in college when you first saw him. I'm assuming you kind of keep, you keep up with the uh, baseball team. Right? A little bit, yeah. And so you saw him from the beginning. And seeing him from the beginning to now, like is it a big improvement or he's always been like this? He's better now, I think. He was dominating in college. Uh, obviously won the World Series with LSU, but um, there was a lot of people who say, is he, he going to be able to be good, blah, blah, blah. You know how people are with yeah, number one picks and all this and that. But he's legit, man. Yeah, I mean, oh, he's yeah. a big dude. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I feel like he goes about it the right way. Um, got a good head on his shoulders. Got a good head on his shoulders. He's got several pitches. Is a young kid that's pretty good, and he yeah. throws a million. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I really hope he stays healthy through his career because I feel like he's going to have a really good career. He's obviously going to go through some ups and downs, which everybody does, and uh, I think that he's, it's going to make him better. But I enjoy watching him pitch, man. It's fun. Nice. So okay. So now we're gonna jump off. Now you're in Philly. You're going through the minor leagues. Tell me about your minor league experience. Like how was it? Um, I don't know. No, I think I had. I was in the big leagues because we both got. You got drafted in 2011. 14. 14. I'm sorry. 14. The same year I debuted. debuted. So. Tell me about your minor league experience because I've I've played in some of the cities that yep. you ca- you came up and played. Yeah, in. so uh, yeah, I was in minor leagues for about a year total. Um, really lucky that we were rebuilding at the time, yeah. so I got to get called up early. But uh, started out in in High A, which is in Clearwater, Florida, and so you went straight to High. A. I went straight to high. So my whole thing was when I got drafted in 2014, I threw like 116 or something innings that year in college. That's a lot? Uh, a decent amount, decent yeah. Nice. And I wanted to sign early to finish out in like to finish out my innings and try to get my innings up so I can be ready for the next year, whatever that may bring. So I signed early and like a week later, week and a half later, I go to the high A, pitch a few games, and I finish out in double A. And I forget how many innings I ended up uh, coming off with, but the next year I was ready. So 15, I was ready to go. Cause I, I, you know, had through the most innings I've thrown in my mm-hmm. career so far and started out in double a and then through, you know, like seven games in triple a and then got called up. So, uh, did you ever go back down once you got called up? I didn't go back down once so I got called up. up. I stayed up, which I'm super, super grateful mm-hmm. that we were rebuilding because I've been around, Obviously now guys getting called up and sent down a lot. Um, talking to Kevin Gosman because he's mm-hmm. worked out in Baton Rouge, lives in Baton Rouge, and when he got called up with the Orioles, he was up and down a mm-hmm. lot. And I'm like, dang, I'm really glad I got to succeed and struggle on this team in the major league, so I can learn to be a starting pitcher and stay a starting pitcher. So uh, I'm blessed to have to be able to do that. Okay, so then you're going and you're becoming a free agent and you know as you're become the free agent process most people don't enjoy and so you know it's coming for you did you were you worried about that at all did that uh, did that uh, affect i'm not gonna say affect your performance but did you think about it when you were performing uh, no man <laughs> no no people say i did and i had an up and down year but i really didn't i felt like i was really good at blocking that stuff out staying in the moment because getting getting to the world series in 22 like that was on my mind all year in 23 like i want to get back there we want to get back there and uh once i got a taste of that like nothing else really mattered outside of the team and the games like we want to get to our goal and try to get back to that spot um but free agency after that season after we lost out in the cs it was kind of it got kind of real like Mm -hmm. i sat in my 
apartment after we lost out. I'm like, I'm a free agent now. Like, there's no guarantee Philly's going to bring me back. I want to be back here. But it's kind of a long time coming. It feels like you're solo. You're on an mm-hmm. island. Like, all right, mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen next. I got a you know, kid on the way. Like, I want to sign somewhere early if, you know, Philly's not in. And um, just so I can get everything set up. And I, I was never one to, you know, want to sign late and go for the top dollar. Okay. I've always been kind of like a hometown boy and wanted to be comfortable wherever that may be. Mm-hmm. And that, and the new city, the, the, the new beginnings wasn't a, a, a real concern or, or thought for you. You, you just, you like being, being, knowing what you're going to get. You, you enjoy that. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then you sign the deal and then uh, tell me what I ask everyone. What's the first thing you bought after you signed the deal? <laughs> I don't think I bought anything, man, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't even know. Nothing? No no fishing poles? <laughs> no, I hadn't fished in a while. Probably something from my van. I have a van that I built a, out. A van? <laughs> yeah. All right, so tell me about this van. <laughs> so I bought what kind it, of van is it? It's a sprinter van. Oh, a sprinter yeah, van. Yeah, it's okay, like a okay. travel van, so I bought it in 2020. Uh and I was like, I want to build one of these out. You, know? you built it yourself. Yeah, and I had some help okay. from around for some some friends. So it's been around the block, uh-huh. but uh, it's uh-huh. done now. So it took three years. Three but, years uh, to build a van. So what what's in it? It's got a bed. It's got a water tank, a bathroom, a so, toilet, a couch. So a you sink, just didn't want to go know? in the house. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. house doesn't do. The house yeah, doesn't you do. You did say good. you want to be comfortable. That's it. But no. All right. So you got a van. So. Do y'all take trips on those? Yeah, we took we taken some trips, man. We so you we home, you, we tra- the, fam, the the wife and the, so it was the wife the, is before the, we had her baby. So it was the oh, wife okay. and two dogs in so, the van. In the van. So God. we we went out we went out west in twenty twenty one during during the lockout or after when was the lockout? Whenever 20, 20. whenever anyway, we went out west and drove out there for a couple of weeks. My brother was out there That's in Utah, cool. so out there and then during lockout we drove out to san diego so and just drove we just drove and then if you had to drop a deuce you just went to back and she kept on driving i actually hadn't dropped a deuce in the van yet oh yeah <laughs> okay all right all right we just stopped with cracker barrels and whatnot but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right so let me ask this because i've asked all the pictures on here what is your routine do you have to be somewhere at 203 and then at 312 and then at 507 or tell me about your game day routine you wake up and what does Aaron Nola do? Used to be. Okay. Used to be like that when I was young. Not anymore. Not anymore. Game day routine is probably get to the field at for like a 640 game, probably get there like 130 and uh, watch some video, whatnot, and then just kind of hang around a little bit and not have to rush and go get loose and drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water. A lot of yeah. water. Yeah, because your jersey, it gets real. I it sweat gets like soaked. a pig. Yeah, it gets no matter soaked. what. <laughs> it gets soaked up there. Okay, so, but tell me about it. So, at, at, when do you start? Um, you're, you go in the training room or, or workout or whatever it is? Yeah, I go, I I get there, watch some video, eat, eat a little bit. Then I go in the weight room and uh, get loose, get stretch, and do some other stuff uh, for about an hour, hour and a half. And uh, create the pitch. There's really not much to it. So you just that's not much to it. Chilling, dog. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the. So do you talk or no? You yeah, I talk. Oh, you're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. So like even during the game, let's say I uh, played a video game yesterday that we both played and I did well. I don't know. I could come talk to you during the game about it while you're pitching. Yeah, yeah, you can. Really? Yeah. Wow. You can. Depending on how the game's going. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Obviously, uh, with some feel, with some feel, with but some feel. everything pretty normal. Yeah, I can just come have a con- not that I would, but I can just come have a conversation with you. Yeah, and you're wow. Okay, so let me ask. Yesterday, yeah, I'm coming back, and so yesterday I'm watching you pitch, and I see these red Skechers, and I'm like, wow. Well, first of all, Skechers is you know, uh, they're doing a, a, a good thing, but tell me, like, do you, you like the sketchers? Tell me about them. Is, is it cool? I do. 
nice. like them a lot. You like they they do they've done a really good job with the cleats. They've done a good job. And and so is that like the are those the Nolas? Those are the Nolas. Those are the Nolas. Yeah. You, you got your this is your signature cleat. I think so. Yeah. Nice, nice. Good for you. We're still good starting. You. We're still starting out. We're starting yeah, but, out. Hey, but you gotta start I know somewhere. You got Kershaw, you've seen the Skechers up yeah, close. Yeah, I've right. seen them. I've seen the Kershaws and now I've seen the Nolas. And I, I think I think the Nolas they uh. They look good, man. They they look you good like on you. Yeah, they, when you was walking off the mound, you had some swag. <laughs> you had some swag. So uh, I, there's a, a a game. It's just would you rather? Because you don't get excited about much, but you did get excited about your brother. I, I felt the energy change, okay. right. and I, so that let me know you really love your brother, and I appreciate that because I I don't I have a brother. I have a half brother. And a, and, a, and a half sister and but they're they're older so i kind of grew up by myself and when i grew up by myself i had the guys my age and so they became my brothers and so i i understand and appreciate the love that you have for someone uh you know your brother obviously and so i think that's really cool but anyways let's find something else that's like your brother would you rather be stuck in a broken ski lift or a broken elevator ski lift Tell me why. Got better. Got a better view. Better, better view, view of everything. Better yeah. Better view of everything. Yeah. Elevator. You're just kind of looking at the wall. Yeah. Claustrophobic. You. Yeah. No, nah, not really. No. But. I think I'm. I'm gonna go elevator. I feel like the ski lift. If it's broke. What's under you is is over. With. Depending on where you are, at least you can see what you're gonna fall into at the ski lift. But it the don't elevator, what you see, it's over with. The elevator, yeah. at least you may only be an inch off the ground. You never know. <laughs> you, you are falling in the snow, maybe. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> something to think about. I don't know. Okay, so what about this? Would you rather shave your head and stay bald or never be able to cut your hair? Because <laughs> you got a nice head of hair right there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm bald. So <laughs> you got both well, options. I'm here. balding. So You're balding? I'm probably going to have to shave in the next few years anyway. Really? So, oh, yeah. You got to let it go. I mean, I'll let it go as long as I can, for sure, as long as I have it. So but, what's, do you have a hair care routine? Uh, not really. So That's just, probably why. What, it looks it looks great. What are you talking with about? With the hat on, yeah. Oh, okay, with the hat on. Okay. Yeah. I only, I only see you with the hat on. So yeah. so you don't you just wake up, bed head, don't matter, hat on, we gone. Sometimes, yeah. No products or anything? Uh, I mean, I don't really know. Shampoo, conditioner. Okay. So. When I do wash it, yeah. Nice. Okay. Beard, you do. You, no, I don't. You just let the beard rock too. Yeah, I just let it rock. I don't really know anything about the beard and hair care routine really? too much. Really? Yeah. Like, so the, the wife, she doesn't do like a, a skin care. Do you? Do, do she you, does, but do you go get manis and petties? No, I've gotten it one time with her, and mm. I didn't like it. I don't like. I, I'm really ticklish on my feet, and mm. I don't. I didn't. I didn't like it. So when they did, they yeah, they nah, showed you was nah, out. You was. I that. like. Went like this, oh, and I was like, uh, 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 "I can't do that." Ah. <laughs> so, so, not so, like, but the Manny, the Manny was cool. Uh, fingers? No, we didn't do fingernails. No, you, you so just, just pedicure. pedicure. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was the only well, one mean, and only time, and probably last time. Well, I mean, <laughs> your hands and your feet make you a lot of money. Yeah. So, somebody told me that, and so I, I, I go get Manny's and Petties, and you know, I, not that you have whatever. I mean. So nothing. Oh, man. We got to get you into something. All right. What about this? Would you rather lose the ability to tell a lie or believe everything everyone says? Lose the ability to tell a lie or believe, lose the ability to tell, to tell a lie? You, you would rather believe or you want, you rather lose the ability to tell a lie. Yeah. So okay. like you would never tell a lie again. I guess. I would yeah. assume. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you like, Straight yeah. up, I don't know. I, I I don't know yet because what if what if you didn't want to go somewhere or something and you had to just make something <laughs> up and you put you know like <laughs> you couldn't do that. You had to be. You're real. right. You got to be truthful. Okay. You right. got to be. You, you cool with that? Yeah. I'm nah, cool with that. I I agree. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I'm just playing devil advocate. Yeah. You know? Okay. All right. I got one more one more thing. Would you rather have skin that changes color depending on your emotions? Yours would probably be the same color all the time. Got asked though, or tattoos that continuously appear that reflect what you did yesterday. 
That's <laughs> <laughs> probably man. Probably the skin color. I think I would do the skin color. Mine would be a lot of different colors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you're just as long always as it goes like, back to the normal one again. Yeah. Okay. As long as it goes back to but yours would be the same. So you would I think so for know. the most part. Especially pitching. If yeah. it was you pitching, but if it was if it was your brother catching, you would probably Oh, I'd be Scott. Oh, oh yeah, it'd you'd be, be Scott high. Okay. Yeah, it'd be changing. That's cool, man. That, that that that's cool. So now I, I got some uh before we wrap up, I got some fan questions. And uh first one. Is there a hitter that you can't stand to pitch against? You're up there. <laughs> um, I would. I would. What about like Aaron Judge? I had to face him a ton. Okay. Uh, not that bad for me as long as he hits a single. <laughs> okay. As long as he keeps. <laughs> but uh, okay. I mean, Austin, so is there anybody that like is your guy? Austin Riley. Oh, I Austin face Riley. him. I face the Braves a ton. So like. Their whole lineup. <laughs> yeah, okay. So but Austin, the, the whole Braves. Austin Riley. Freddie's obviously yeah, – I think I have decent numbers against him, but he's he's always a tough AB. Just, yeah, I face like him it. a ton of times, and uh, he's a tough man. Um, him and Riley, Acuna's tough. So, I mean, yeah, uh, you, you got a couple you know, guys. guys who really work it, work the counts and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, you, you, that makes sense. So, what about this? Uh, who are some, some, some teams, some sleeper teams – in the MLB that we have to uh, watch, like that's not watch being for. talked about that that's much. I think Cleveland, Cleveland. I, think Cleveland I mean, well. Cleveland get talked about a little bit, but I think there's there. I feel like they're always kind of a sleeper team. Yeah. I mean, they got a. We just played them in Philly. And, uh, they beat us two out of three, but every guy that came out of their bullpen has like one and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, they always got a good. They bullpen, always though. got a good bullpen, and they just scrappy. The lineup scrappy. I mean, obviously you got Jose Ramirez too. He does everything, but uh, you got their whole infield scrappy guys, man. And they, they run, they brothers. run, they take advantage of balls in the dirt. You know, balls that are thrown across infield, they take the next bag. Um, they do a lot of the right. They things. do a lot of the right things, and uh, that's what that's why they're good. That's why they're having a good year. Anybody else? Uh, sleeper teams. Um, it doesn't have to be that sleeper. That, that, that sleeper. Let's see. I think. Uh, I think obviously Baltimore is going to be Baltimore. Yeah, they're going to be, and I know they get talked about a lot, but I I really think that they're they're I think they're really good. Yeah, I think, I think the think Red Sox. Good. We we played them once this year Sox, for yeah. a series. They're just scrappy too. Mm -hmm. They're really mm -hmm. scrappy as well. It's in a tough tough division. Yeah, hey, at least it's tough. Yeah. It is. They got a lot of a lot of good teams up there, and they, obviously, the Yankees—they're not a sleeper team. But I mean, when you got Judge, when you got a man getting walked with nobody on, you know that's uh, that says he's a, lot. a different beast. <laughs> All right. So, uh, who's the funniest guy in the clubhouse? Funniest guy. Uh, probably. Man, we got a few. Stubbs, Stubbs is funny. You know, he's a, he seems like he's a cool dude. He is, man. He's he's great. Uh, Marsh. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Marsh, yeah, yeah. super bunch of energy, yeah. ball energy, and then uh, Booms. Okay, he's sneaky okay. funny. Is he? Yeah. yeah, he's a big dude. He's a big dude. I seen him yesterday, and I'm like, wow, he's that's a big. He's dude. a big boy. Okay, so what about this? Should Louisiana have an MLB team? I don't think so. Why not? I think LSU's so big over there. Well, okay. especially from Baton okay. Rouge, obviously being biased from Baton Rouge, but it's such a college town. Mm -hmm. I think every I think they love that. The people love that. And they and then the MLB may come in and may come in and disrupt depending on where it's at. Yeah, if yeah. it's in Baton Rouge, no, they don't say they shouldn't have one in Baton Rouge okay. for sure. That makes sense. Uh, I mean, you got the Saints. That's kind of really the only yeah, pro yeah. team in New Orleans. But uh, I think, I think the Louisiana Lafayette, the college, and then LSU. I it's think a they, college should, town. they should just. It's a college. It's a college town. It's a college Let's state. College. Okay, uh, college state. Last question, and I want to know this. So great, great uh, question, fan. How has life changed, life or your routine? How has that changed? since becoming a father it's changed it's changed a little bit um 
Like waking up earlier, which I like. Mm-hmm. I like waking up earlier. Uh, getting home from road trips. And road trips are tougher when mm. the family's not here. Just because the older my daughter gets, like the more I miss her. No, and the more I miss my yeah. wife. Yeah, so yeah. you know how it is, yeah. too. It's oh, just, yeah. it's a real thing. It really is. Like people say, God, I miss my kids so much. Like the older they get. I'm mm-hmm. like, even after like mm-hmm. a couple of days, I'm like, yeah, man. It's like, you'll know. And so like, yeah, I know now. they just do little like, stuff. Once you say send so many, my wife sends so many pictures and videos and stuff like that. It's like, golly, man, I'm ready yeah. to get back home. So so they don't, do they come? Uh, every now and again. Okay. Yeah, depending okay. on where we're at. But uh, it makes it makes coming home better. So I think that part's changed a lot. Did um, it give you a new uh, perspective on how good or bad you do? Like when I when I asked that, like if I go zero for four, you know, two punchies, whatever this X Y and Z. Like when I come home, yeah, b- before having kids, it was like, man, you know, you come home and you sulk a little bit. You just sit, you know, you warm up your food, you just kind of sit and be quiet and just think to yourself. And now it's like when you come home, you got a little girl. I got my son now. I got I got two. You got the wife, and I you can't do that. You can't you can't do that to them. And so, did that uh, change for you? Like knowing that no matter how good or bad at work, you got to clean it up. Yeah, you leave mm-hmm. it at the field. You get home, and you're dad now. And like you said, you can't do that to your family when you get home. And I enjoy that part about it, mm-hmm. you know, because, um, uh, you know, when you see them coming home, uh, it just kind of brings a little bit more light to everything. And baseball is kind of like second to that. Um, cause you're focused on being a dad and teaching them and being with them, especially your kids as they get older. So you're not gonna mm-hmm. be playing baseball for, we're not gonna be playing baseball for ever. So we're going to be a dad a lot longer than mm-hmm. baseball. So baseball is, it's great. And you want to do great all the time but uh when you do have bad days uh getting home changes everything yeah. because you now you gotta leave everything at the field you yeah. can't take it home yeah and i think i think it definitely uh it helps with the the work-life balance so brother thank you for coming on the show um you know i know you don't do these type of things often uh, i know you uh pretty even kill guy you're pretty uh you're low you're not wheeler low but you're just a little bit higher <laughs> uh on the on, on the low key spectrum you're a high low key spectrum spectrum guy so uh thank you and I, it's good that uh, i finally have gotten to to talk to you cuz we've been facing each other for each other for a while a long yeah, time man. and and uh we haven't really got to uh gotten to speak but i know every time i step in the box it's a mutual respect i know it's a battle it's a fight you know we're trying to get each other but we also know at the end of the day like it's a respect. You know, no doubt. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes it, makes fun. it fun. So, uh, but anyways, here's to uh, many more, many more battles. Hopefully in the playoffs throughout the season. Whenever got uh, you got what seven years left? Yeah, that means fourteen more regular season starts. Can't you guys? Yeah, fourteen more <laughs> regular season starts. So, but anyways, thank you, brother, and uh, I'll see you uh, at the field. Awesome, All right? appreciate it, guys. Thank, thank you, you for uh, for watching the show. This is Aaron Nola. If you uh, if you uh, want to get to him and want to talk to him, you want his attention, just bring up Austin Nola. <laughs> Ask him anything about Austin Nola. He will have a full blown conversation uh, about it. So I may ask him about, uh, I may ask him how's Austin right before he pitches. Maybe he throws him off a little bit. So, anyways, check you guys out later.